So good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for attending this ATA webinar. Um, Lane Clement and I are going to be talking about um, SimSender AIMSIM um, from Siemens. Um, and really, we're going to discuss the product itself, what it does, where it fits into the market. Um, and also, um, Lane is going to actually fire up the software itself and walk through um, a demonstration of using it in, in, in a live condition. But before we get into AIMSIM, let's talk a little bit about ATA, um, ATA, our own employee owned small business, and we have over 180 um, full time staff around the country. And we really are a high end group of individuals specializing in engineering consulting and testing at, at a very high level. And so, and we pride ourselves in, in the quality of the work that we do. And, and our industry is really, we focus on mostly on aerospace and defense, but certainly robotics and controls. Themed entertainment is, is another big area for us for, for safety in theme parks um, and mining and, and consumer products uh, are also areas where we focus. And, and really the, the, the three pieces of, of the cycle that we deal with are, are design right the way through from, from concept to um, detailed structural design, analysis with, with a lot of um, tools either from Siemens or from other sources. And, and also one of the big parts of our business is test from, from structural testing to, to GVT testing of, of large structures. Uh, we have offices in across the country, um, often in, in areas of, of aerospace you know, um, focus, um, from San Francisco and San Diego with our HQ, um, some in Denver, Albuquerque, and Huntsville and, and DC. So that's the intro for ATA. And then, um, I'm sorry, as well as that, we, we're also um, ATA um, our Siemens Platinum partner for, for selling Siemens software, um, and we sell it and support it and use it. So the great thing is that, that we are experts in its use and hence our clients get to benefit from, from that skill set of our expertise. Um, and we really simulate the, the whole of the, we specialize in the whole of the Siemens SimCenter portfolio, including AIMSIM that we're talking about today. And Lane is one of the team members specializing AIMSIM on the ATA side. So let's talk a little bit about what is SimCenter AIMSIM. Um, and even before we start about that, let's talk about the, the, Siem the Siemens vision for digital twin. Um, and really, you know, everyone is in agreement that digital transformation is, is really the key to, for, for companies to be both innovative and, and competitive in today's market. And Siemens really, you know, em embrace that vision. And so many of the Siemens tools are, are designed um, with, with that in mind, to embrace the digital twin um, and digital transformation. So, so really a lot of buzzwords there, but what, but what does all of that mean? And so, you know, when you look at um, a product, let's say in this case, an aircraft, um, you, you'll design it and you'll probably use a lot of design tools to create it and, and analyze it and make sure it's, you know, it's ready, ready to be manufactured. Then you'll manufacture it and then ultimately you'll, you'll use it. Um, and during that process, you're using tools all along the way to go from design through manufacturing um, and, and then usage and monitoring it in, in all of those conditions. And so there's a thread, a digital thread, which is highlighted in the ribbon on the top, where, where each of those scenarios gives feedback to the other. And so really, you know, when you're designing it on the left, you're designing it with manufacturing in mind, when you're manufacturing, you know, you can get feedback back to the design. And ultimately, when you use it, you can also pump the feedback from the usage back into both the manufacturing and the design phases so, so that all pieces can benefit from the other. And so the vision is a comprehensive digital twin of, of all of those areas of application. And so how do we how do we get to that to that vision? It all sounds sounds really Fantastic, but really there's a couple of pieces. And one of those is, is realism for, for modeling um, and, and continuity of, of data between the three groups. And ultimately exploration of, of the results that are available in all phases. And Siemens looks at each one of those in, in kind of three kind of states. One is a simple um, goal of realism. Another is approximate. And then real world is very fine detail in the re realism of modeling. Continuity, which is the, the, really the, the backbone of the, the connected ribbon, is really you know, three levels again. One, is it totally disconnected? Two, is it, is it managed? Um, but three, is it totally integrated? And, and really the goal here is that we're shooting for you know, box three in all of these examples. And ultimately exploration 
version of, of results and, and, and simulations? Is it ad hoc? Are people doing it, but just you know, in, in a, a non-organized fashion? Is it automated? And then ultimately, is it intelligently automated where it can be used um, to much greater effect? And so when you look at the digital twin, um, Siemens has um, basically the portfolio of, of tools to, to manage that engineering innovation. Um, and, and Sim Center fits in here within the system simulation group. You can see a list of the Siemens products here. And AIMSIM is the one that fits into the system simulation. CAE simulation, the CAE is really you know, part of the design, part of you know, CFD and, and FEA tools to actually model simulations. And then physical testing is, is the final manifestation of, of the two things. And so really, th this is how it all fits together. And over here on the right, you can see HEADS that you combine all pieces of those tools um, in an automated framework. And then Team Sender is, is the PLM tool from Siemens that ultimately brings it all together to manage the, the whole process. And so um, basically, this brings us to to SimCenter um, and, and really what is SimCenter? And so SimCenter is, is a system to actually model um, systems and networks of processes. Um, and this talks about, um, you know, really some fundamental questions, you know, how, how can I do certain things? How can I make the right decisions to, to predict the outcome? How, how can I verify complete systems, not just components? Ba basically questions that designers are asking themselves all the time. And so Siemens and, and, and AIMSIM embrace this, this V model system for um, basically um, design and innovation. Um, and it really is a, a proven system and, and pretty established and, and been around a little while um, for developing projects and, and processes. And so when, when deployed with, with AIMSIM, the, the really the system level, system level innovation is really kind of growing in importance. Years ago, component innovation was really the driver for improved products. But as we've, as we've gone through and, and generated more complex processes and products over the years, really system innovation has become vital to actually um, you know, create more, more innovative products. And so what does that mean um, in terms of products you know, on the street? And really when we talk about you know, electronics, Within, within systems need to be integrated and talk to each other. They need to be cross domain so that they can you know, do um, simulation and validation. And then really ultimately at the end of the day, systems need to be exchanged between OEMs and suppliers so that um, in designs can be reviewed by different groups. Um, and AIMSIM lets you do all of those things and, and enables them. And so fundamentally, AIMSIM is, is a system or a product to, to model mechatronic systems. Um, and really, it uses a plant system and a control system and, and the controls between them. And so what does that actually mean in practice? Well, it is the combination of multi-physics systems that, that, are being, that are interacting and being actively controlled. And so um, AIMSIM really lets you build a network of, of a multi-physics system controlling each of the nodes as if it was a, a real process. And so what's an example of what, what a mechatronic system looks like? And, and really, um, this is a fairly standard definition from Siemens, or not definition, but an example of what is a mechatronic system. And in this case, it's a steering um, rack from, from an automobile. And you, you can see the steering wheel and, and the tie rod ends are, are the, the mechanical piece of the system. It's connected to the rack, which is hydraulic, uh, and that is also connected to an, an electric assist pump device and a speedo. Um, and then ultimately, it's all linked together with, with a control system. Um, and so an example like this is, is exactly what AIMSIM lets somebody um, model and, and predict the outcomes of it. When you turn the wheel, how, how much does the rack move? What are the pressures in the hydraulics? What, what does the control system look like? All of those are are examples of what AIMSIM can model. And so if you take the next step and say that that's a pretty basic analysis of, of, of a process, AIMSIM can also be extended pretty much to do, do a whole car. And it can really go from you know, the lowest levels of a component right, right the way through to a whole system. Um, and here you can see this, this is a sketch and, and you know, this is really an example versus probably a, a real customer example, but you can see AIMSIM looking at the system for a whole car and you can see an, an, an engine here, 
you can see a, um, a clutch and a flywheel here with some code controlling both of those. There's an alternator, which is being controlled again. There's, there's a transmission, um, the four-wheel drive or not, and then generally, you know, just the, the overall car pieces over here on the right. And so you can also note that there is an AIMSIM, sorry, a, a MATLAB Simulink box here. And AIMSIM can talk to MATLAB Simulink and processes can be built around it. Now, it should also be noted that AIMSIM can do a lot of the same things the MATLAB Simulink can do. So not only can it talk to it because it's convenient for the industry, but also it can do a lot of the same things much faster. And so here are the kind of the general areas of, of, of study that AIMSIM looks at. And most of these are, are built around the ideas of providing libraries of components that fit into each of these silos. And so electrical systems, fluid systems, it's mechanical, and then propulsion, um, system integration, and ultimately thermal simulation. All, all of these are libraries that are available. And so when you look at, again, at a, a typical model of, of, a, of a device, um, you can see that in this case, you know, the, many of the libraries here, this is an intake. Um, you can see that the, the libraries here are, are easy to drag and drop components into the flowchart to create, in this case, an engine and cylinders. And so, so the list of library components, imagine if you want to create a cylinder, you know, you don't really want to start that from scratch. And so Amosim actually comes with this with libraries delivered ready for you to take and, and, and customize the parameters, but ultimately the physics are already included. And so, and this is one screenshot of, of, of four of the libraries, but there are, there are a lot more. There's over 20 other libraries for doing different things from um, HVAC air conditioners to, you know, to all kinds of things. And so um, you can see that each of these libraries is, is drag and drop and you can then tweak, tweak the, the parameters once you get it inside. So and when you take all of those pieces, and, and in this case, looking at it um, relative to a, a DCT model for a, a, a transmission and clutch, you can see how each parts of a system can be defined as a submodel in AIM, a sub model in AIMSIM. And so the shift control can be embodied in, 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 a, in a sub model. The engine itself and the clutch can be in, in a separate model. And an actuation and driveline can be another. And those can be either worked out as one model or they can be shared with with different engineers within an organization for for them to work on their specialization but either way it lets it lets a full system be created in in a modular way and, and even those blocks can be shared with with other companies and often if you need to in a, in a secure environment to make sure sharing of of data with oems is is easy so so today lane is going to actually look at um some, some electrical examples using using batteries. And even though this example is, is fairly all encompassing in terms of aims in, you know, a complete engine and drive line, it can also be used on a much smaller scale to look at the insides of, of a battery. I mean, in this case, this is the, 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 the aims in layout of, of just a battery pack with the, with the, the cells actually highlighted as, as nodes in the aims in network map. Um, and basically with the, with the right conditions applied, the prediction of, of, of heating can be assessed based on the usage load cycle and things like that. So in this case, you, you, can, you can easily predict thermal runaway. You can adjust the, the model parameters and the, the load cycle to, to make sure you avoid that. Um, and so then lastly, before we pass the ball to Lane, AIMSIM is also really great for, for talking to, to HEADS, the, the optimization tool from, from Siemens, which really provides two, two layers of, of functionality. One, one is automate the process for, for creating um, optimizations. And secondly, providing intelligent search through complex databases. Now, now AIMSIM runs very quickly compared to, to many other CAE tools. Um, and so in this case, you can see that HEADS was able to automate AIMSIM to, to run um, 500 design concepts on a pretty modest computer through, um, th through to optimizing a, a vehicle for electric vehicle sizing. So, so to predict components needed to, to achieve specific parameters. Um, and really the goal here was that, that you can set up your AIMSIM model and you can, you can manually tune it until you actually get it to where you want it to be. Or you can use HEADS to, to drive AIMSIM towards the target parameters that you need. 
ultimately much faster. Um, and sometimes those parameters are, are non-intuitive that he's will often find. So with that, I am going to ask Lane to take over and actually show you Amos M. Wright. So as Adam said, I'm going to actually go through and talk about how to use SimCenter Amesim. So before we really get into the software, I want to talk about what the basis for SimCenter Amesim actually is. Systems modeling itself has been used for decades to develop dynamic models of physical systems. Um, this is historically been done using first principles like um, Newton's second law, you know, F equals MA, Kirchhoff's law, stuff like that. And it leaves the designer basically open to however they want to try and derive these equations. And this can get really arduous. Um, not only do you have to derive those equations, but then you have to code them up in whatever language you're going to use, whether this is um, you know, C, Python, MATLAB, you're going to implement it in Simulink. Um, you still have to do that implementation. So the route that Simpson or Amesim goes is it's based on bond graph modeling, which is an energetic systems modeling approach. On the right, I've got the typical kind of bond graph model development. And if you haven't heard of bond graphs, that's totally fine. Um, this is simply just using the underlying language that uh, Simpson or Amesim uses. At the top, this is something that most engineers should be relatively familiar with. I've got a coupled two mass and spring system with a rotational element in the middle. If I were to make the bond graph of that system, it's on the right. And then from that bond graph, I could derive these equations of motion at the bottom. Once I have these equations, this is the point where I'd, you know, if I was still in grad school, I'd go hop into MATLAB and code all these up and then run ODE 45. Well, the beauty of AIMSIM is that it does that bottom part for you. So basically all I have to do is drag and drop and hit run. As long as I've got my correct parameters in, I'll get the same output as if I were to use ODE 45. So this leads us to the many uses for systems modeling within SimCenter AIMSIM. Um, you can do systems architecture design work with it. You can trade studies, you know, specification definitions, which is what we're going to look at today, studies on parameter trade-offs, troubleshooting of systems, control design verification, initial control tuning, and model verification. And I'm sure there are applications that I have forgotten to list here. So the example we're going to look at today is a simple electrical vehicle motor and battery specification. So we're going to use a simple model to develop preliminary specifications specifically for the battery capacity that will meet range requirements, and then the motor characteristics that will meet other performance requirements. So before we actually get into AIMSIM, and after this slide, I'll open it up, I just wanted to go through this, this model and kind of talk through what each part is. First thing, we've got a driver block, which approximates the driver actually in the loop of the car. And the, what we're going to do today is use what's known as the Worldwide Harmonized Light Duty Cycles Test Cycles, or WLTC. It's probably the um, acronym you would be more familiar with if you've seen this before. There's going to be a torque speed motor model. So this, this model does not have an internal resistance and torque characteristics or um, torque parameters characteristics. It simply is more mapping in a, in a um, like from tables not the classic motor model that most people have seen. Then there's a battery and load model, a simple battery and then just a generalized load that's approximating all the other stuff going in on in the car outside of the motor. There's a longitudinal vehicle model that approximates just moving forward. It should be pretty simple to um, understand. Then we have an electrical vehicle VCU, and VCU stands for Vehicle Control Unit. And the VCU receives information from the driver, from the battery, and from the electric motor, and then it analyzes them in order to minimize consumption of the battery. In our case, these VCU algorithms can be highly complex, but Amson actually provides four different baseline algorithms for you. You can also customize this. So this is, again, part of the beauty of the software is pretty much all this stuff is extensible. So from there, let's actually pop open AIMSIM and look at what we've got. So this 
should be exactly what we just saw. And what I'm going to do first is I just want to pop open the help on the vehicle block to kind of show people what's actually involved in this. So this block is a pretty simple submodel of the vehicle. Um, both front and rear axles are included. As we go down and look at all this, don't worry if this all seems very complicated. Once you get a little bit of experience with the software, this is all very, very clear and should become pretty simple. Um, basically, the, there's information coming out to the back of the vehicle. These inputs into the bottom of the vehicle are the torques onto the, onto the axles. And this includes braking as well as drive torques. Um, there's signals coming in. That's this K block right here. Um, in the front, we've got some linear forces and velocities and position and acceleration coming in and out. And then this top block is the road conditions. As we go down, what's actually implemented within this block, I'm not going to take time to go through every single coefficient and um, internal parameter in this, but you can see this is not the most simple thing, and this would this would take time if you had to code this up yourself. We get down to the bottom, and we'll look at like let's resistance forces. So this includes rolling resistance in the wheels, and this includes windage. Not something that every every simple model will always include, but it's there if you want it. Um, it also includes the arrow force. And then you can also set up different tests with this. And if you're in vehicles, there's coast down test and a roller test bench. Um, you can put in different wheel characteristics, brake characteristics, longitudinal slip characteristics. You can this can be with or without slip, um, as it says up at the top. And then as we get down even lower, it tells you the exact equations that it's running. So every single block has this amount of information with it. It's, it's really, really helpful to make sure that you're implementing what you're expecting to implement. Um, and it, it, it's not just a black box. So you have to trust that it's actually what you want. So looking around again, just a quick thing. We've got the driver, the BCU, the motor, battery and the load. We've got the reducer going to the, the car and then the car model itself. So from there, what we'd normally do in this workflow is you just drag and drop. So for instance, if I go to IFP drive and I look at vehicle loads, this is the same block. So I just drag and drop. And the reason that this one is, the color is inverted from the block on the left is that nothing's hooked up to it. So that's telling you that you don't have a complete connection to this block yet. So we'll delete that. Um, so then you go through and you actually pick submodels for each one of these, because all these blocks have multiple submodels that set up the proper input and output. Um, fortunately for us, we don't have to do that today. Next, we go over to parameters. It'll take just a second. So now we'd actually look at this and we go in and we can put in various parameters. So if we want to look at the aerodynamic and rolling parameters, these are all estimated parameters for the vehicle. So in our case, all we need are estimations. So you could make a model like this much earlier before you had final geometry from your arrow and design team. One other thing it does support is you can have equations. So for instance, the total vehicle mass, they're actually estimating you know, 945 kilograms for the base mass, as well as this battery energy, uh, this battery, battery co correction. So, the battery weight is generally linear, um, increases linearly with the capacity of the battery. So this just takes total battery energy, multiplies it by a thousand to get it into watt hours, and then divides by this 117 coefficient. One other thing is this Sim Center AIMSIM does not care what units you have. Um, you can put this in whatever you want. We can put it in grams, we could put it in ounces. And behind the scenes, it will do all of the unit translation, which is really, really nice because I think it's probably been one of the main sources of errors that I've seen when I've hand coded these models. So once we get that, save. Taking a second, I'm going to go into simulation. I'm going to show this 
This is just showing that it's creating a simulation program for the system. So at this point, we're ready to go. My estimation on building this model, I mean, just dragging and dropping and connecting all this stuff would take maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Getting the parameters, that may take some doing and some talking to other engineers, um, but overall, pretty straightforward. Now we're gonna run the simulation. This will actually show us there's five different runs that happen in the simulation um, doing different drive cycles. I'll show the show those in a second when it's done running. Let's open. We've got two plots to look at. And then we've got this is temporal results, and then we also have these cross results. So what these are two telling us is the plots on the left show the response of the vehicle to the inputs. And then the plots on the right are simply showing us, are we meeting our requirements or specifications? So in our case, this top, uh, this top plot right here is the WLTC vehicle cycle for a class three light duty vehicle. This plot on the right is showing us the error um, basically whether or not we're tracking this. And so in order to track this error and still meet the cycle requirements, basically this blue signal has to stay within the bounds of the red and yellow signals. Um, these other maximum speed and um, with steep slope start, all these are just telling us whether or not we are meeting those requirements. Now, the reason that you're not seeing a blue line or anything else on this is that we're, we completely blown it away. And that's because the motor is currently way oversized because for the first start, what I'm trying to hit is the range. So when, if we look over this in the right, what we've done is actually behind the scenes, we've set up some equations to integrate the power over, over the cycle and understand how much energy is extracted from the battery in one cycle of this WLTC. Then we multiply that by a factor that gives us the total range desired by the battery. And so this end, ends up with us saying like, currently we can make 156 kilometers of range. But what the requirement says, we're gonna need 250. Okay, so we're not there yet. What we're gonna do is come over and we're gonna use something called global parameters. And these are parameters that can be referenced within all of your blocks. And right now the battery energy is at about 20 kilowatt hours. So let's go ahead and change that, increase it to about 27.5 and just see where that gets us. Then we run the simulation. Oops. Sure why I did that. It's running, it runs four and five. All right, we got up to 210 kilometers. So we're definitely getting closer. Let's go ahead and just iterate that to where we know we'll get what we want. 35 kilowatt hours, we'll apply, run one more time. Interesting. All right, so now we've got a battery that we know will meet the range. So 35 kilowatt hours, we'll be able to get a little bit above our 250 kilometer requirement. Now, looking at these motor, motor specifications for the maximum speed, power, and torque, this is way above what you would normally need. And as I said earlier, the reason that these values are so high is just to make sure that we can track the cycle as desired. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the maximum speed needed. Our requirement's 150. And so we're gonna just lower the 20,000 revs per minute because we don't need to go at 263 kilometers an hour. And let's just drop this down to, let's try 12,500. Apply, let's run that and see where that gets us. running. You can watch in the background, it actually shows you the status of every single one of these simulations. All right, 
164.8150. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's leave that at 12,500. But now you can see we are way, way below our requirement with the uh, for the time to get from 80 to 120 kilometers per hour. So this is still telling us our motor is still oversized. And since you know we're creating a system that is going to be sold, we don't want to have to spend more money on a motor than we have to. So for now, let's go ahead and lower the torque. Let's we'll just say, okay, what happens if we lower this down to 190 newton meters as my maximum torque? Again. Okay, so now we're closer, but now we're not quite meeting the zero to 60 kilometers per hour requirement. Let's put this up to 205. Apply. Let's run one more time. Okay, we're hitting the exact requirement for the zero to 60 kilometers per hour acceleration time, but we're still beating the top level pretty, pretty well. So let's see if we can drop that power down. Just try 130 kilowatts, apply one more, one more simulation. Okay, so we can get away with 130 kilowatts. So I'm gonna stop here, but you could play these games all day to really, really get down to a really finite specification. For a first pass early in a design cycle where as a systems engineer, I know getting something like this really early makes my life way easier. Cause I can go start talking to motor manufacturers and suppliers, start getting families of motors that will work. So the question is, for this thing, what's next? Now that you've got this base model built, if you've done this early in the process, you can easily iterate this model, make it more complex, refine the requirements and the, or refine the parameters. You can use actual data to perform component selection. And when I say actual data, you can, let's say, make a more complex motor model. That actually includes the internal resistance, maybe the inductance, um, the you know various motor coefficients, all those things. Um, you can start performing trade studies and you may be able to deliver a range to the design team saying, hey, you know, we can't have a drag coefficient higher than you know higher than X. Or, you know, it'd be great if you can keep it below this. Um, we can play with gear ratios, for instance, to see how that parameter will affect power draw, maximum system current. Uh, these are all things that I've done in the past with these very, very simple models, and it's it's really powerful. And so you don't have to go and you know hope that one motor based off some model that you don't actually know is going to meet your requirements because that can really inject a lot of cost and uh, schedule into into a program. So that's that's what I've got. I hope that the simple simple demo kind of shows you some of the early early stage power but again to reiterate these models can be used across entire design cycles as Adam pointed out so Adam back to you excellent thank you Lane um, basically up until now all of the, the mics and, and have been muted now they'll be opened if anybody wants to ask any questions um, now would be a good time either ask in, in, on the audio or put it in the chat. Um, so if anyone's got any questions, please let us know now. So um, this this will actually is a bit, has been recorded and will be put up on our, um, our, our YouTube site so that you can share it with other people later on. Um, and we appreciate everyone for attending. Thanks a lot. We'll, we'll, we'll close the meeting.
have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.